Mike Mangini he started this whole thing off, set the bar way high. He, he was unbelievably amazing. I'm looking very much forward to hearing the outcome as soon as possible, because I'm very excited about this. Mangini did set the bar very high, but there's other drummers coming in that are absolutely incredible players. Here we are, day of my audition. As far as preparation, I think really the only thing I'm going to do today is just listen through the songs a couple times again, and uh, I feel pretty good about it. I'm relaxed and uh, I'm ready to go. Should be a lot of fun. Rock on. First we came in and just met everybody and hung out for a minute, got the drum straightened out, which is, uh, didn't take a lot of time at all. So what we want to do tonight, we thought, how could we audition these guys where it'll be very, like a very well-rounded and complete process. And the, the very first thing is, can they play the songs? Our phase one, Nightmare, Spirit, and then Dance. We chose some of our most complicated pieces mm -hmm. to audition these guys. And you have a, a heavy metal tune, then you have a, a more lighter atmospheric tune like Spirit, and then you have an epic tune. If there's anything that a drummer has to grasp, yeah. it's those aspects right. of dream theater. Right. I didn't really have a lot of time to um, to prepare physically, but I've had you know, a month now to just run it through my head. My background, I mean, I'm known primarily as an extreme metal drummer. And honestly, metal music was probably the last form of music that I fell in love with. Derek had a couple of things that were, were pretty incredible. His blast beat is, uh, I've never heard anything like that. <laughs> ran through the three songs, Nightmare to Remember, Spirit Carries On, and Dance of Eternity. Spirit Carries On is a killer song to play because I'm more in that mellow type of vibe most of the time. I thought Derek played the songs great. I think he's a great guy. He's just immediately very personable mm -hmm. and we felt incredibly comfortable around him. You know, honestly, I felt like I've known these guys for a while. <laughs> very nice. <laughs> Great back. Nice, nice feel, man. Yeah. It really felt very, very musical. Next on the agenda, I guess so, a little jam. Let's we'll do a little jam. jam. The phase two, as we're calling it, that's important because that's, that's uh, musical chemistry. We'll see how our, our musical chemistry is. Sure. The way that we write music a lot is we'll do group, we'll do jams like that for like 40 minutes straight, and out of those jams, there'll be like these seeds in a, of ideas. So that's very important to us ultimately in the creative process. You know, just like they said themselves, it's not about finding the guys that can come in and play the stuff. You know, that chemistry's got to be right. And then the other side of that was to, um, you know, the idea of coming up with some riffs that we could throw at them to see how they, you know, how they learn. We should go into, uh, into brain melt land. I think that's cool, you know, obviously I expected these guys to throw some stuff at me. Just, we're gonna throw out some riffs that we rehearsed. We're gonna have some odd time twists and things and just see what you would come up with. It's really of interest for us to see how quickly a drummer can absorb the idea, take it in, and then spit it out, and not only just play it, but also put his own personality to it. Now I'll turn you on to the second audition tune that I wrote, and the arrangement that I made that I sent out to Petrucci and my own to learn. Check it out. put them together, I'm thinking, what can I create that would be kind of like a cool groove, but then have something that would kind of like, you know, spin it around and make everybody think. So it seems to be... Uh, it's, it's a great test. You know, for me, taking something home, being able to work on it, you know, and really craft it into something, that's, I, I like doing that, you know? That was a good example of why we're doing that kind of test. That's 716 screw with it. And for what it's worth, it's meant to be a little confusing. 
I, you know, like stuff like that. Once I once yeah. I internalize, for me, it's much you know easier to start playing with it after. It's yeah, yeah. Dude, thank you yeah. so much. Coming thank down. you. Definitely. Personally, it didn't have the same feel for me as Mike. Mike sounded just very natural with the band. There's nothing I would change about today. Nothing at all. No, it was it was cool. You know. You know, I'm not that type of guy that even thinks, what would I change? It, it's happened, it's done, it's gone, it is what it is. Can't change it, why think about it, you know? You know, we, we needed to find people. We weren't really sure how to go about it. You know, went online, looked at forums and things like that. Thomas's name was, was one that came up a lot. I was born and bred in Vienna, Austria. I started playing professionally at the age of 18, as soon as I left uh, school and got my diplomas. The day started off incredibly and had this impromptu jam, just me and Thomas, that just made my day. I was just smiling the whole day after that. I think uh, it sounds good to me. <laughs> yeah, it sounds Everybody good. Everybody okay with the levels? Yeah. Okay. The first song we played was uh, Nightmare to Remember. The second one was The Spirit Carries On. And the third one was uh, Dance of Eternity. Thomas is a, yeah. a freaking powerhouse. Yeah. He's mighty. Oh my that god, guy. man. He's mighty. I personally love Thomas's interpretation. Mm -hmm. I love the way he took the songs and especially during the jams and he was able to just infuse yeah. his style right into it. You've completed phase one. Oh, okay. Yeah. You actually completed phase two earlier. Yeah. Right, right. Oh, yeah. right. Yeah. We're ahead of the game. Yeah. <laughs> I had some issues at one point. I didn't quite, you know, couldn't distinguish what was going on, but it's minor stuff. I, I lost you at one point. I was just Me like, too. <laughs> I was like, what the hell's I think it was the same point. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh. So we, should we jump right to, uh, to phase three then? Uh, we also jammed over various riffs. Long the phrase. Well, we're just going to loop the first oh, little part. So it's kind of like... Getting... Yeah. Okay, that's the first one. They threw some tricky bits at me, and uh, it was great fun to work out what those bits were, and, uh, and a bit of a challenge, but I love a good challenge. The way that we're doing the auditions with the three phases is actually proving to be really important because if somebody's judged specifically and only on playing through the tunes and they had some trouble or something, then that's the only angle we'd see. Okay. Wow, I'm impressed. You good passed job. the test. Thank you. Very, Very good, cool. Tom. Great stuff. Thank you. <laughs> Seriously. I think we're we're pretty much done with the, the yeah. process. I mean, if we can sit down and talk for a bit. Sure. Felt great to me. Cool. It was a lot of fun. Absolutely, yeah. Great. Really enjoyed it. He interpreted the songs more as opposed to playing them exact to the record. And it's tricky. I mean, you know, as a musician, I can understand their desire to come in and kind of add their own flavor to it. But the reality is, you know, we played these songs, you know, thousands of times and fans have heard it. We, we need it to feel, you know, just a certain way. Thanks for having me. It's a great opportunity Thank and you. a great Thank chance. You. And no matter what happens, you know, I'm happy to be here and it's a pleasure to meet you all. Cool. Same here. And, really uh, and play with you. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, man. I had a ball. It was great to come in and play, so I'd like to thank the guys in the band. I really enjoyed playing with you guys, and I hope we can do this again. It would mean a lot to me to find a home as a, as a musician, as a drummer.
Virgil um, tonight. Well, when I, I toured with G3, he was Steve Vai's drummer on that tour. I'm Virgil Donati. He's infam infamous in the, in the drum world, right. you know. Jay, how are you, man? Good, man. Good. I like the way we eased into it. We just sat, I sat down and without even saying a word and thinking about it too much, we just started jamming. When I first heard uh, the Dream Theatre, it was around 1994 and I was still living in Australia. Not many people may know this, but uh, it prompted me to actually form a Dream Theatre cover band. He was in a Dream Theatre cover band in yeah. Australia. That's like one of the first ways I heard about him. And so on and on. Exactly. <laughs> And we can do that all night. How are you feeling? How's it sound to you? Mix I think I think I'm quite comfortable. Mix wise, good. Oh, good. Yeah. The songs we played, we I think we started with Nightmare, which is quite an epic. You guys said over there, it's rock and roll. To be offered a chance to be part of something like this is is really exhilarating. I mean, I was very very uh, excited and uh, you know quite honoured to be asked. Trying to play a piece like that first time through, you know, it's, it's a big, it's a big call. <laughs> From that, we went into the mother of all pieces, the dance of eternity. This is a very involved, complex tune, multiple metre changes. That was a lot of fun, actually. I, yeah, I felt quite calm, quite relaxed through the whole thing. I had a little bit of a hiccup towards the end. Let's do, that last, confusing. let's do that last section again. Yeah. One, two, three, four. One, one more time. Yeah. One, two, three, four. There's this one spot that we actually went back to to try again, and I realized the reason we went back is because he was trying to do something that was really cool. I kind of figured out a, a pretty cool little part there, and it's just not coming out with... Yeah, sure. You know, at first I, I was thinking a little bit like, well, maybe he's not getting it. <laughs> yeah. right. But then yeah, he goes, really. you know, he's it like, was. I can play it like the album, and he plays yeah, it right. exactly. It's like, the easiest yeah. like all right, this guy understands it, but yeah. it's like, oh, but I wanted he to was, do this. Yeah. Well, yeah. we got through the songs. Okay. Let's move on to the next, uh, next phase. The toughest part of the audition was uh, part three, which was after we played their pieces. Jordan, you had the time signatures for this, right? Yeah, you want to see it? You want to hear it one time and then see it? or? Uh, oh, we'll let me see it, see it and, sure. yeah, and hear it. I thought it was cool with Virgil that he uh, he plays guitar and piano, and he, you know Jordan showed him his music pad with the transcription. It's like oh oh. Yeah, right. So it's like six two, two six three, three six three six seven eight. That's the whole loop. Like you said, it speaks the language and, and bonded, which which is really impressive and great to see. One two three. I think, you know, they wanted to see how quickly we would pick up on, on these ideas and integrate, you know, our, our own ideas into it. Yeah, <laughs> ah. yeah you got some cool, cool stuff going oh, on. Oh, it's coming together yeah. nicely. That's killer, man. Yeah, that's awesome. You passed the riff test. Oh, oh. you did great, man. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. I can tell you eat this stuff for lunch. Yeah. <laughs> and I think we had about three of those to get through, and uh, they were really interesting. We appreciate it. And we're, right. we're privileged to have you come I'm, down. I'm, man. Yeah, man. 
yeah, it was it was great to play with you guys, and it felt effortless. You know, it felt oh. like we, we were gelling to me. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, absolutely. Apart from the little few little moments, but thanks for the opportunity. Cool. Absolutely, You're man. Welcome. Absolutely, you're a monster. Yeah. World class. I think I was quite pleased with the audition. These things are never easy, I don't think, and um, if I had to make a comment on it, I would say quietly confident. Actually, what both of them had in common today, today. Vir both Virgil and Thomas um, did some interpretation. To me, at this point, after the four guys, really the only one who played the stuff exactly where it felt like home was Mike. Yeah. We've been touched by some magic here, but I think, you know, there's still more to come. I think tomorrow is going to be an incredible day. It's just such a, a monumental moment in Dream Theater's you know, legacy or whatever. The next thing you know, you're standing in front of one of the most incredible drummers in the world. Well, I'm Marco Miniman. I'm here at Imperial Beach. I all of a sudden, on my cell phone, got messages like, Hey, Marco, you should be the new drummer in Dream Theater. I was like, what's going on there? So I logged on, and then I found out that Mike Portnoy quit the band. I know he's done a lot of playing with Paul Gilbert, Adrian Ballou. He's done a lot of work with Eddie Jobson. Obviously a very capable guy. capable musician yes, in more ways right. than one. I got in touch with Jordan, and we talked about it. He goes like, hey, you, would you be interested? I was like, man, yeah, why, why not, you know? <laughs> This seemed to be locking in right away. The, the, the chemistry. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so, um, well, with the tune, I, it's different than playing them with the CD. So yeah. I hope I'll make it through it, you know. Yeah. I think they really chose the pieces very mature and, 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 and wisely. Nightmare to Remember is like 15 minutes long or 16 minutes long. So that is like almost like this anthemic, epic kind of thing that is very long. So yeah, that's where you can really feel out if the musician did his homework, first of all. One interesting thing about Marco's playing for me was that as I was playing, I was like, I couldn't help but like smile and I, it was almost like I had to laugh. I was speechless watching this guy. He was absolutely phenomenal. A phenomenal drummer. You know, that's one of the things that, that really like stood out to me is the level of musical joy in the man's like, you know, playing. If you give energy to the people, people will bring it back and that is fantastic. That to me is success. So we'll do, um, we'll do The Spirit Carries On next. The second song, Spirit uh, Carries On, is, um, is more like a gospelish kind of almost Pink Floydish tune. Where did Marco come from? Why is he here? Where do we go when we die? <laughs> I'd love to have a, you know, home, like a strong band. You know, it's not like the fame, money in the first place, but a band that carries the dream of a musician's heart. The thing that stands out in my mind about Marco is that he played with such joy 
you just, it was just emitting from him. It was like he was smiling, and it was almost, even though he was hitting hard, it was effortless and it was engaging. Wow. <laughs> Great feel. Shall we jump into some riff? Yeah, we should do some riffs. Just do me a favor, just play just for half a minute. Is it cool? Loop it. The one last piece that John wrote was kind of tricky. So I had to kind of, you know, read it twice and kind of, you know, jump in. If it's written well, you take your time and you play it. That's, that's what I have to do, right? <laughs> Thank oh, you you're, you're incredible, man. Great vibe. Oh, really incredible. Great vibe. Oh, thank you, guys. Awesome. Thank you so much. Awesome. It felt great to us. I mean, everything you did, the jams were fantastic. You played through the songs. You learned it all. They were, you know. I came in with a good vibe. I left today with a good vibe. That's all that matters, you know. But I think the impression today from both sides was, was very, very promising. That's good. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Pleasure. Yeah. Awesome. Very good. I could, I could see myself as being a part of Dream Theater. I had a, had a good vibe of, uh, about it. This has got to be one of the most important decisions that we, you know, will ever make, Absolutely. really. And finding a new member, it's like finding it's just a new family member. Yep. If I had to pick two drummers right now, it, it would probably be Mike Mancini or Marco Newman. You know, it's, they just had this weird kind of voltage to them, and it kind of felt like, you know, but it's not Mike, but you know what, this is pretty cool. Yeah. Down to the two. On the series finale, the final two drummers audition, and the band is blown away. He just really came in and shocked us. But as the auditions come to a close, Dream Theater are faced with the toughest decision of their careers. It was clear. We made a decision. We'd like to, at this point, welcome you to the family. <laughs>